Hey, I'm Jenny Dolphin and today I will let you look over my shoulder as I paint a digital watercolour with real watercolour textures. I've been a watercolour artist for all my adult life using tiny details, very small brushes and um, I love doing this, of course, but after a while my eyes just weren't up to that anymore. So what I did is try and um, try around and procreate to get the results I wanted where I could just zoom in on every tiny detail I wanted. After a while, I was fairly happy with the results, but what I was missing was the fun of the process and um, the splashing around with actual pigments and the way the colors swirl just into each other, the way they granulate, especially with paints from Daniel Smith or Schminke. So I thought, why don't I just paint loads and loads and loads of textures with exactly the pigments, the granulation and the swirling into each other that I always loved so much. So I broke out all my unused paints and papers and just started painting quite big canvases with all the sorts of, um, of textures that I wanted. I could then just insert them into Procreate with all the tiny detail I needed. So what I will do is insert these texture textures exactly where I need them in Procreate. I've got a line art, I've got some paper, te paper texture uh, on top of everything and now I will ju just use a brush with a nice edge that is just a placeholder for now. I will later uh, exchange that for one of my textures. So I will put in this one and then I will use Add File and look at all these wonderful textures I've painted and scrolling through to the one I'm going to use for now. It'll change later. That's the nice thing about doing these things in Procreate. So I'm scrolling down to this one called Dappled Light and it's imported now. It covers the entire area but we just want that on the area we just painted. So we set this area to clipping mask and now it's just where I just painted the placeholder. I can adjust it slightly. I didn't paint it, paint it quite that bright. And what I can then do is repeat this step with all the areas of this painting that I have. So starting with the hair and then onto the skin and I'm just going to use placeholder colors as well. Uh, this looks terrible but um, it's just the area where I want my eventual texture to be. So I can afford to just pick a color that I don't like particularly. What I can't afford is to be sloppy, so I will just make sure I've got everything covered. Most of everything, but that's watercolor for you. The reason why this already looks a bit like watercolor is because of the texture I've got on top of everything that adds a nice papery feel to all of it. So now I have the placeholder in place and Again, I go to Add File and I'm going for a nice texture that works well for pale skin and I insert that into my painting. It's quite rough because it's a quite big, big size, so I'm going to resize it, make it a bit smaller and um, make sure I've got all the lighter bits, all the darker bits exactly where I want them to be. I merge my layers so this doesn't get too big and then I go on to the next area that I want to replace. So instead of my placeholder for the hair, I'm going down to a wonderful texture called Tundra Sun that I've painted with uh, the Tundra colors from Schminke. Uh, I've got a nice mix of oranges and deep purples here to set off the orange and really make it pop. I switch it around to find uh, the combination I really want. This is it. Set a clipping mask, merge my layers later on 
and now this looks pretty much uh, like a watercolor that I would have had in earlier times. So what I do now is just insert the placeholders, seen here in pale green. Here you can see my placeholder layers, most of them still in pale green. So what we'll do now is exactly as we've done with the skin and the background and the hair and just exchange all of these for nice watercolor textures. I'm using some for the stone now. This is one with a lot of ultramarine, a lot of granulation that works really well for stone. And we'll again set that to clipping mask. So now, once we've turned on the stone area once again, now we have here a wonderful texture for stone. And we're going to do the same thing for the shirt and hose and the tunic and the ornaments and everything else. So I'm inserting all of these textures exactly in the places I want them. They're not exactly the textures and the colors I need. I'm going for approximations right now and I can always go in later to make sure uh, they're exactly what I want them to be. They're very bright right now and um, my usually watercolors weren't this bright so I'm going to tone them down a little later on. So now I've got all the clothes and I'm going for the ornaments again with that tundra color I talked about uh, earlier, the same with the hair. Now the book, book pages and the book itself. And now we've got pretty much all the colors, roughly what we want them as. You can see all my layers here and now I can go in and just make sure it's got the mix I want. I start to do some detailing in the background and then what is left is really just the detailing on the figure itself. And that I do in exactly the same way that I would have done uh, on paper and with actual paint. So I go in, choose a brush with a nice edge and then I just start painting the details in exactly the same way that I would have done on paper. Choose a color that makes sense for detailing the hair. I'm using on a separate layer right now, which is a luxury that you don't have on actual watercolor, but might as well go for the luxury there. Again, I'm doing something that I would have done with normal watercolor and that is to draw the paint out with water. In Procreate that amounts to the smudging tool and I use it in the same way that I would have used real watercolor. Just soften the edges in some places and leaving them sharp in others. Now what I haven't done here and what I would normally do with real watercolor would be to go into different uh, colors from time to time. So not everything is the same sort of brown that I have here. Uh, I'm going to do that later. You can see that uh, later on on the, um, on the tunic, for example. So we'll see that later on. Smudging. So this is me just doing what I've always done, doing a lot of details 
very fine brushes, tapering brushes, that um, I can then uh, slightly adjust later, adjust the colors, make sure it's not just one solid color, but changes hue a little bit. Um, here in the, in the tunic, which has a bit of a brocade look going on there, um, you can see that uh, I'm using pretty much the same color right now. But as soon as all of that is done, I can go in again and just uh, dull down the colors in some places. And that's what I will do in the entire piece now. On the sleeve, on the hose, and then on the hands everywhere. You see me doing a lot of color adjustments here because um, this is a process I'm not, uh, not, not very used to right now. So after a while, I'm sure uh, I will hit what I want a lot earlier. But this is now pretty much where I want to be. Um, still some work to be done in the background and some highlighting the way I would with white gouache on the hair and some of the exposed edges. And now it's done.